Biden's uncommitted Democrat voter. Disney erupts in a civil war, and the feds wanna know what YouTube videos you're watching. I swear I just clicked on that 40-hour Sailor Moon series recap for research purposes. Then more on this week's America Uncovered headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Southern invaders are entering the U.S. in record numbers and wreaking havoc. And good news, I'm not talking about the southern border for a change. I'm talking about the periodical cicadas. These insects rise from the ground in cycles of 13 to 17 years, and this year we'll see the largest number of them in decades, possibly even centuries. Trillions, yes, trillions with a T, are expected to infest the southeast U.S. and cover the ground in the exoskeletons they shed, causing loud crunches for anyone walking over them. Experts are calling this cicada Geddon, which is a silly name for two reasons. First, unlike locusts, they don't actually do a lot of harm to anything humans care about, such as crops. And second, considering they come of age of 13, you really should call this their bug mitzvah, mazel tov. Speaking of nightmare fuel in the southeast, Florida. Thousands of Florida residents who moved to the state during the pandemic are moving out, complaining of the dangerous wildlife, relentless heat, and hurricanes. Did they not expect to find those things in Florida? Have they never heard of Florida before? This is like someone leaving a bad Yelp review saying, this restaurant was awful. All they had on the menu was pizza. There were screaming children everywhere and it had the biggest rat I've ever seen. I'm never going to Chuck E. Cheese's again. Pro-Palestinian advocates organized a protest vote during the Wisconsin Democratic primary urging citizens to vote uninstructed to pressure Biden in his stance on Israel. Uninstructed received roughly 8% of the total votes. This was inspired by a similar protest in Michigan, where so many people voted uncommitted that uncommitted gained two Democratic delegates. So is the Biden campaign promising to do everything it can to appease these dissatisfied voters? Nope, they put out an ad trying to convince Nikki Haley voters to jump ship, saying that Donald Trump doesn't want their vote. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the town? I'm not sure we need too many. But the Biden campaign is trying to appease its base by sending Kamala Harris out on a PR tour, visiting an abortion clinic, a school shooting site, and hosting rapper Fat Joe at the White House to discuss reforming marijuana laws. Would they be reforming them so it'd be even easier for her to lock people up? Harris's approval rating is even lower than Biden's, and his is lower than it's ever been. I hope Biden is as religious as he says he is because his best shot now might be saying his prayers. Maybe just not with one of those $60 Trump Bibles. The only Bible officially endorsed by President Trump. And of course, it's the King James Version. Iran is accusing Israel of launching a deadly airstrike on an Iranian consulate complex in Syria that killed at least 12 people, including three top Iranian commanders, one of whom was kind of a big deal. And by kind of a big deal, I mean that CNN described him as the most high-profile Iranian target killed since then U.S. President Donald Trump ordered the assassination of IRGC General Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad in 2020. Israel is bracing for Iran's retaliation with its citizens and officials on high alert. Is this it? Is this the start of World War III? The moment we've all been dreading? Well, you can take solace in the only Bible endorsed by President Trump. It includes the U.S. Constitution, Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Finally, the book got an update. Cybersecurity is important. And no, that's not a lead-in for a sponsor. That's a lead-in for the next story. AT&T says that data, including social security numbers from 73 million of their customers were leaked onto the dark web. The source of the leak is still unknown. I feel bad for those 73 million customers. They're gonna need to make tons of calls to try and sort this mess out. And that's gonna be tough since they all use AT&T and they offer worse coverage than a mesh roof. Korean scientists announced they set a new record during a nuclear fusion experiment for the length of time they sustained temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius. Experts hope nuclear fusion can provide limitless, clean energy. And for context, 100 million degrees Celsius is seven times hotter than the sun's core. The only thing hotter than that is the fires of hell 
which you can read about in the God Bless the USA Bible, which can answer profound questions that have been plaguing man for generations, like, is this a good gift? Where is my order? And what if my Bible has sticky pages? Speaking of making money, Disney. Or at least, they used to be good at that. They've lost so much money on flopped movies lately, Cinderella might need to move her magical castle into a magical studio apartment. Many blame Disney becoming woke and turning off moviegoers with a liberal agenda being pushed in their content. As a result, there's a brewing war in the House of the Mouse. In one corner, Nelson Peltz, founder of the investment firm Tryon Partners, which holds a $3.5 billion stake in Disney. Peltz is trying to secure two seats on Disney's corporate board, one for himself and one for Disney's ex-chief financial officer, Jay Rasulo. This puts him in contention with current CEO Bob Iger, whom Peltz blames for the company's decline. Iger says he's trying to avoid a Tryon takeover of the company. At their annual shareholder meeting, Disney secured enough votes to fend off Peltz and Trian. For now. Despite this defeat, Peltz had his supporters. The California Public Employees Retirement System, which has 6.7 million shares in Disney, supported Peltz. This was Peltz's second attempt at gaining a seat on the board. Will he try again? And if Disney continues to lose money, will Peltz's next bid be successful? And perhaps the biggest question, if Peltz eventually succeeds, does this mean Disney's gonna start making anti-woke movies? I look forward to seeing what I assume will be a huge hit, Little Mermaid, big boobs. Must be hard to stay under the sea with those flotation devices. Speaking of watching questionable things, according to court orders obtained by Forbes, federal investigators ordered Google to provide information, including names and addresses, on everyone who watched certain YouTube videos. And before you slam your laptop shut and toss it into a lake, America Uncovered wasn't one of those channels. Undercover agents were trying to locate someone suspected of breaking money laundering rules by buying Bitcoin for cash. These agents sent out YouTube links to videos on using drones to map areas and augmented reality software and asked Google for information on the 30,000 people who viewed the videos. Because violating the constitutional rights of 30,000 people, it's totally worth it if they can catch someone who maybe possibly didn't follow the rules exactly when buying some made-up internet money. Won't someone please think of the IRS? Speaking of Google, the company has agreed as part of a legal settlement to delete billions of records it kept on users while they brised in private incognito mode. Yeah, all those things you thought you were viewing privately? Google knows. They know. But before you slam your laptop shut and toss it into a different lake, remember Google said they would delete all that data. Although, I'm not sure how much I would trust the word of a company that dropped don't be evil as its motto. That's a big red flag. In fact, that flag is creepier and redder than the eyes of these southern invaders. Happy bug mitzvah, everyone. You know what else can be creepy? Technology. Does it really make our lives better, or is it an ever-expanding evil depriving us of free will? I discuss this in the game RimWorld on our other channel, Deep Thoughts While Gaming. Check it out. An American Covered wouldn't exist without your support. Click that orange button to support the show on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar an episode, and you can set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.